Hi, in this lecture we will transform tokens into features. And the first way to do that is bag of words. Let's count occurrences of a particular token in our text. The motivation is the following. We are actually looking for marker words like excellent or disappointed, and we want to detect those words and make decisions based on absence or a presence of that particular word. And how it might work? Uh, let's take uh, an example of three reviews, like good movie, not a good movie, didn't like. And let's take all the possible words or tokens that we have in our uh, documents. And for each such token, let's introduce a new feature or column uh, that will correspond to that particular word. So that is a pretty huge matrix of numbers. And how we translate our um, text into a vector in that matrix or a row in that matrix. So let's take, uh, for example, good movie review. We have uh, the word good, which is present in our text, so we put one in the column that corresponds to that word, then comes word movie, and we put one uh, in the second column just to show that that word is actually seen in our text. We don't have any other words, so all the rest are zeros. And that is a really long vector, which is sparse in, in a sense that it has a lot of zeros. And for not a good movie, it will have four ones and all the rest are zeros, and so forth. This process is called text vectorization, because we actually replace the text with a huge vector of numbers, and each dimension of that vector corresponds to a certain token in our database. Uh, you can actually see that it has some problems. The first one is that we lose word order because we can actually shuffle our words and the representation on the right will stay the same. And that's why it's called bag of words, because it's a bag, they're not ordered, and so they can come up in any order. And a different problem is that counters are not normalized. Let's, let's solve these two problems. And let's start with preserving some ordering. So how can we do that? Uh, actually, you can easily uh, come to an idea that you should look at token pairs, triplets, or different combinations. This uh, approach is also called as extracting n-grams. Uh, one gram stands for tokens, uh, two gram stands for a token pair, and so forth. So, let's look how it might work. We have the same three reviews, and now uh, we, we don't only ha have columns that correspond to tokens, but we have also columns that correspond to, uh, let's say, token pairs. And uh, our good movie review now translates into a vector which has one in, uh, in a column corresponding to that uh, token pair, good movie, uh, for movie, uh, for good, and so forth. So, this way we preserve some local word order and we hope that that will help us to analyze this text better. The problems are obvious, though. Um, this representation can have too many features, because uh, let's say you have 100,000 words in your um, database, and if you try to take the pairs of those words, then you can actually come up with a huge number that can exponentially grow with the number of consecutive words that you want to analyze. So that is a problem. And to overcome that problem, we can actually remove some n-grams. Let's remove n-grams from features based on their occurrence frequency in documents of our corpus. You can actually see that uh, for high-frequency n-grams, as well as for low-frequency n-grams, we can show why we, why we don't need those n-grams. For high-frequency, um, if you take a text and take high-frequency n-grams that is seen in, all, in almost all the documents, and for English language, that would be articles and preposition and stuff like that, because they're just there for grammatical structure and they don't have much meaning. These are called stop words. They won't help us to discriminate texts, and we can pretty, uh, pretty easily remove them. Another story is low-frequency n-grams. And if you look at low-frequency n-grams, you can actually find typos, because people type with mistakes, or rare n-grams that usually uh, are not seen in any other reviews. And both of them are bad for our model, because if we don't remove these tokens, then 
uh, very likely we will overfit because it, that would be a very good feature for our f future classifier that, um, that can just see that, okay, we have a review that has a typo and we had only like uh, two of those reviews which had those typo and it's pretty clear whether it is obvious, whether, whether it's uh, positive or negative. So it can learn um, some dependencies that are actually not there and we don't really need them. Uh, and the, the last one is medium frequency engrams. And those are really good engrams because um, they, they contain uh, engrams that are not stop words and that are not typos and we actually should look at them. And the problem is there are a lot of medium frequency engrams. And it proved to be useful to look at n-gram frequency in our corpus for filtering out bad n-grams. What if we can use the same uh, frequency for ranking of medium frequency n-grams? Maybe we can decide which medium frequency n-gram is better and which is worse based on that frequency. And the idea is the following. The n-gram with smaller frequency can be more discriminating because it can capture a specific issue in the review. Let's say somebody is not happy with the Wi-Fi and let's say it says Wi-Fi uh, breaks often and that engram Wi-Fi breaks, it cannot be very frequent in our database, in our corpus of our documents, but it can actually highlight a specific issue uh, that we need to look closer at. And to utilize that idea, we will have to uh, introduce some um, some notions first, like term frequency. We will denote it as TF, and that is the frequency for term T. Uh, the term is an engram, token, or anything like that, in a document D. And there are different options how you can count that term frequency. The first and the easiest one is binary. You can actually take 0 or 1 based on the fact whether that token is absent in our text or it is present. Then, a different uh, option is to take just a raw count of how many times we've seen that term in our document. And let's denote that by f. Uh, then you can take a term frequency. So you can actually look at all the counts of all the terms that you have seen in your document. And you can normalize those counters to have a sum of 1. So there is a kind of a uh, probability distribution on those tokens. And for that, you take that f and divide by the sum of Fs for all the tokens in your document. And one more useful um, scheme is uh, logarithmic normalization. You take the logarithm of those counts and it actually introduces logarithmic scale for your counters and that might help you to solve the task better. So that's it with term frequency. We will use that uh, in the following slides. Another thing is inverse document frequency. Let's denote by capital N total number of documents in our corpus. And our corpus is a capital D, that is the set of all our documents. Now let's look at how many documents are there in that corpus that contain a specific term. And that is the second line, and that is the, uh, the size of that set that actually means the number of documents where the term appears. And if you think about, if you think about uh, document frequency, then you would take that number of documents where the term appears and divide by the total number of documents, and you have a kind of a frequency of, those, of that term in our documents. But if you want to take inverse document frequency, then you just uh, uh, swap the uh, up, and, up and down of that ratio, and you take a log logarithm of that, and that thing we will call inverse document frequency. So it's just the logarithm of n over the number of documents where the term appears. And using these two things, IDF and term frequency, we can actually come up with TF-IDF value, uh, which, um, which needs a term, a document, and a corpus to, uh, to be calculated. And it works like the following. You take the term frequency of our term T in our document D and you multiply it by inverse document frequency of that term in all our documents. And let's see why, why it actually makes sense to do something like this. A high weight in TF-IDF is reached when we have 
high term frequency uh, in, in the given document and the low document frequency of the term in the whole collection of documents. That is precisely the idea that we wanted to follow. Uh, we wanted to find uh, frequent, um, frequent uh, issues in the, in the reviews that are not so frequent in the whole data set. So specific uh, issues and we want to highlight them. Let's see at how it might work. We can replace counters in our bag of words representation with tfidf values. We can also normalize the result row-wise, so we normalize each row. Uh, we can do that, uh, for example, by dividing by L2 norm or the sum of those numbers. You can go anyway. And um, what we actually get in the result, we have not counters, but some real values. And let's look at this example. We have a good movie, 2 gram, and it appears in two documents. So in our collection, it is a pretty frequent uh, 2 gram. That's why the value uh, 0 0.17 is actually lower than 0 0.47. And we get 0 .40, uh, 0 0.47 for did not 2 gram. And that actually is there because that did not 2 gram uh, happened only in one review. And that could be a specific issue. And we want to highlight that. We want to have a bigger value for that feature. Let's look how it might work in Python. Uh, in Python, you can use a uh, scikit-learn library and you can import tfidf vectorizer. Let me remind you that vectorization means that we replace our text with a vector, uh, with a huge vector that has a lot of zeros, but some of the values are not zeros. And those are precisely the values that correspond to the tokens that are seen in our text. And let's take uh, an example of five different texts, like uh, small uh, movie reviews. And what we do is we instantiate that tfidf vectorizer and it has some um, arguments, use, useful arguments that you can pass to it, like uh, mean df, which stands for minimum document frequency. That is, a, that is ex essentially a cutoff threshold for low frequency n-grams because we want to, uh, to throw them away. And we can actually threshold it on a maximum number of um, documents where we've seen that token. And this is done for uh, stripping away uh, stop words. And this time in scikit-learn library, we actually um, pass that argument as a ratio of documents, but not uh, a real valued uh, number of uh, documents where we've seen that. And the last argument is ngram range, which tells you, which, uh, which, actually, which actually tells TFADF vectorizer uh, what ngrams should be used in this back of words representation. In this scenario, they take one gram and two gram. Okay, so if we vectorize our text, we get something like this. Uh, so not all possible two grams or one grams are there because some of them are filtered. You can just follow, uh, just look at the reviews and see why that happened. And you can also see that uh, we, we have real valued values in this matrix because those are actually TF-IDF values. And each row is normalized to have a, a norm uh, of one. So let's summarize. Um, we've made actually a simple counter features in bag of words manner. We replaced each text by a huge vector of counters. You can add n-grams to, to try to preserve some local ordering and we will further see that it actually improves the quality of text classification. You can replace counters with tfidf values and that usually gives you a performance boost as well. In the next video, we will train our first model on top of these features.